Hi, Dr. Plechner. Can you tell us a little bit about the clinical signs you can observe in your pet for Plechner syndrome? Yeah, definitely. There, there are a lot of clinical signs that a pet owner can really see in their pet. Uh, obviously, if the pet has an allergy, autoimmunity, or cancer, we, we know there's a problem right there. But in a, quotes normal pet, uh, what you can look at is, one, the interesting thing is you can look at the skin of the armpit and the abdomen and see if it's hyperpigmented. Now, is it gray? Is it black? This is not a sign of staying in the sun and getting too much sun. It's a sign of an estrogen thyroid imbalance. This is a tip-off. That is not a normal, uh, basically, pigment that should be there. And it's also a sign of inbreeding. And if you then start from the head of your bet and move towards the tail, uh, you can lift up the lip. And where the gum reflects upon the uh, enamel of the tooth, there, if there's a little red line there, uh, this basically is an IgA deficiency, another form of Plechner syndrome. Now, if the teeth are nice and clean and you're told you have to clean the teeth because uh, the dog has halitosis, it's not from the teeth. It's coming from either a food sensitivity or definitely an IgA imbalance. You can look at the eyes. When the IgA, when the Plechner syndrome is in vogue too, you can have a chronic eye problem where uh, you actually see drainage from the eyes. And if you look at the whites of the eyes, they're usually red. Uh, and it's interesting, uh, with the skin, if there seems to be a skin problem, if it's not a general allergy problem, but you're finding that your pet has chronic ear problems, has a tendency to lick the feet, and many times has got a rash on the tummy, this is a IgA imbalance that's caused by foods. And so what you need to do on something like this is be very, very careful with what you're feeding and making sure that in your food that you are feeding your dog, there's no sweet potato, there's no flax, there's no carrots, apples, or soy products. These are all high in estrogen, which will add to Plechner syndrome and cause this inflammation. And a number of years ago when I was at UC Davis, uh, I did a research project on determining uh, where mast cells are. Now, mast cells contain histamine, and when they go, that's where you get inflammation. So what my findings were, guess where all the mast cells are? In the ears, in the feet, and the skin of the abdomen. That's why it shows up in those areas. And if one eye, around one eye or one ear seems to be more prevalent, it's because there are more mast cells. But if you're told, oh, it's a chronic ear infection, let's use antibiotics on and so forth, and it continues on. It is not. It's a syndrome imbalance with an inflammation and not an infection. If you look at the general coat of your dog, is it sparse? Is it coarse? Does it break off easily? This often is a sign of an estrogen thyroid imbalance. Uh, as you move towards the rear of the animal, uh, if, if you basically see uh, a skin irritation over the back, you're often told it's a flea allergy that basically uh, get rid of the fleas, your dog will be fine. It doesn't work that way. It's not a flea allergy. It can be an inhalant. Many of your inhalant allergies show up on the back, as do insects too, which is, which is kind of interesting. Uh, if you have one dog at home and five others and one has fleas and the others are fine, I found a real interesting research paper that I think uh, is pretty significant and it dealt with the rabbit flea. Now the rabbit flea will go to the rabbit when the rabbit's in heat and the estrogen is high to actually lay eggs and procreate to increase their population, and estrogen does that. So if you start thinking along these lines and your dog has this syndrome with high estrogen, guess what? The fleas are gonna go to that dog, okay? And those of you that have chronic anal glands that they need to be drained all the time, or your dog is scooting all the time to empty them and can't do it, if they fill up prematurely like that and you empty them out and it's a, a liquid, it's not a heavy, thick paste that won't empty well on its own, you've got an IgA deficiency with an inflammation of the mucous membranes and production of anal secretion, period. And these are just a few of the chronic... Uh, clinical signs you can see uh, with your pet. Uh, upset bowel, something where diarrhea, something that comes and goes, so on and so forth. If you look at the uh, angulation of the wrists on the front legs, 
and the back legs, if they're out cowhock slightly, your dog probably has come with an enzyme deficiency in trypsin. 90% of your German shepherds have all of this. And so as puppies, they never absorb their calcium and they have lengthened ligaments. And this is also then gets to a point where one, they can be very thin or they can be heavy only because the trypsin, if it's not there, it breaks down protein. So all they absorb is carbohydrate. This is another clinical sign that you can look for. So there's a tremendous amount of uh, signs that can be produced with a good physical. Heart rate should be 90 to 120 beats per minute. If it's slower, you may be looking at an estrogen thyroid imbalance. If on no food at all, very food at all, and still uh, the weight is heavy, uh, realistic and you've done thyroid and everything's fine, they say, oh, your thyroid, your pet's thyroid is fine. It may not be fine because it can't utilize that thyroid hormone unless you've done an estrogen. So this is where the Plechner syndrome is really, really, really important. So these are just a few of the clinical manifestations that you as a pet owner can see. Sleeping all day, not having the energy, chronic arthritis, uh, limping off and on, uh, swollen joints sometimes, elevated temperature, up and down, up and down. This is all an endocrine immune surveillance imbalance. So this hopefully will provide you with something to go to your dog with and, and look. And if you have questions, you go to your veterinarian. And what would the treatment for Plechner syndrome be? Well, what it would be, uh, the, the treatment for this would be identifying the hormone antibody imbalance. So it would be a matter of doing the Plechner syndrome, which is a simple blood test. And once that, the blood test results return, very simple then to simply uh, supply basically uh, the pet or again, the pet owner with proper hormones to regulate the immune system. The one thing to remember is with uh, dogs and cats, if that uh, mucous membrane antibody, which is in the gut is below 58, oral medication often won't work. Uh, and in, in people, if it's below 68, it won't work. And the interesting thing with that is that uh, many times you or your pet can be in the hospital on IV, for example, uh, antibiotic, Keflex, and with an IgA imbalance that nobody realizes. And then you get better because you're getting it either in the muscle or, or intravenously. And then when you're sent home with the same Keflex or same antibiotic, you take it orally, you reverse again. You go right back into the same syndrome. You go, well, we'll try something different. No one ever measured your IgA. And this is something just from a general blood standpoint for people and animals should, should always be done. Otherwise, if a physician or veterinarian sends a medication home, there's no guarantee you or your pet can absorb it. And if the IgA on the, on the Plechner syndrome, if the IgA is below 58, uh, depending on how low it is, then a series of injections at a 10-day interval are usually indicated uh, of either a short, I use a short acting steroid, a fluorinated steroid with a longer acting Depomedrol. And so this bypasses the gut, it gets to the pituitary and it funds that negative feedback. And with that, the estrogen levels start to drop. And as the estrogen levels drop, the IgA levels come up. And once those levels are at 58, then oral, medic, oral steroids will work beautifully. But this is in dogs, cats, and in people. 